Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Time For You. I am Shelia Stevens, coming to you from Frankfurt am Main in Germany, today in a hotel with my best friend, having a little Easter break. Um, you might hear this later on, and I'm with my beautiful friend and colleague, Leah Vanley. Hello. And uh, Leah's coming to us from Zurich in Switzerland, as per usual. The, it's better sound. It's when I a lot it better. Yeah, I, I'm. The, I'm sorry, guys. On the last two yes. episodes, I I don't have my book stack, so I didn't have it close to my mouth. So maybe this episode will be better this way. Yes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. A lot better. Sorry, oh. I didn't didn't hear the difference, but now I hear it. So I I saw you doing it. So I thought I put the microphone a little closer to my mouth. So let's dive in, huh, Leah? So today I wanted to talk about what happens when we drop the idea of it's on me um mm. so um there well so i want to set the stage a little bit before we get into the specific um example because there are all different types of people in the world with all different types of um feelings about how the mystery of life works mm -hmm. and I think we've talked about it on the podcast, Leah, like in the last two years, I've really gotten more and more into this space of like who I am as not only um, a human being, so what my human nature is, but also uh, who I am as a spiritual person, like what is my, what is my spiritual nature? Mm. And there are so many understandings out in the world about how this spiritual being that we are if you believe that you are and you may not think that but i i believe we're spiritual beings having mm -hmm. a human experience um and how that spiritual energy manifests in the form so in this world that we live in like we're i'm sitting here at a table knocking on the wood and um, talking through a microphone that I'm holding in my hands, you know, that's what we mean by the form, like things we can touch and see and formed ideas. Um, and I've been on a journey in this last year and we're doing real talk. We're talking about like yes. the truth of what we've been seeing and not just like stuff we're hiding from everybody. Right. So, <laughs> um, I, I've been on this journey, like looking in the direction of, um, you know, how much is how much in the world am I creating as Shelia, the physical person, you know, putting my mind to something and um I'm going to achieve this goal and I'm typing on the computer to make those emails happen and to make the people respond, you know, all that kind of stuff. And how much can I sort of let go of and just give up to the bigger spiritual intelligence, um, the energy behind life, um, the place where synchronicities happen, mm. where client recommendations come out of nowhere that I didn't see coming, that had nothing to do with me forcing it to happen. Um, and I've been on some different like group programs um, with uh Dominic Scafidi and Grace Kelly, like living miraculously, um, where they talk about your spiritual team and divine downloads and all that kind of woo woo stuff, you know, so I'm going to call it woo woo. Um, some people would category, categorize it as esoteric. Um, some people have a literal sort of personal allerg allergic reaction to anything that's woo woo or, um, that seems esoteric and things like that. Mm. So if you fall into that category, uh, stick around because <laughs> um, don't go like stay, <laughs> listen, keep, keep, keep listening. This isn't about religion. It's not about dogma. It's not even about, even if you don't yet, I say yet have the feeling that you're a spiritual being, I want you to listen, continue listening to the episode today, because I I think there's something there that's even helpful for the people who are more intellectually minded. And so I thought I'd like share from an experience that I had um, a couple of days ago on a mastermind. Mm. Do you want to hear about that, Leah? Yes, of course. <laughs> so I was um, getting, coming to the end. It was our last day on a mastermind. And we were um, a lot of like-minded um, women 
from around the world who are on a mastermind with Grace Kelly. And Grace is a wonderful coach. She's not the prince or the the duchess um, movie star that was the duchess of, of Monaco, I guess, mm-hmm. before, before she died in that car accident uh, quite a while ago. It's probably yes. 30, 30 years ago by now. I don't know the exact time, but um, she's a coach um, from Ireland who lives in, in Italy. And Grace is all about the spirituality. She's all about calling on what she calls the spiritual team, including... Um, people who have already left this planet, like her fiance who passed away and uh, during COVID of a heart attack mm-hmm. um, or, you know, um, her dog that has gone before, like she calls in um, this spiritual energy and it in her experience of life makes things less on her own shoulders. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, she was, she sometimes like brings the most funny examples of like, she wants to open a bottle of wine. She's home alone and she doesn't have the strength to get the cork out of the bottle and there's no one there to help her. And she puts it down and she will say to her spiritual team, spiritual team, help me open the bottle. And she'll go off and like wash her hands and make her bed and come back. And suddenly the bottle will just open up more easily, right? That's how mm. Grace lives in the world. And it's very much like the direction she points to in the mastermind, which is all about business building. And on the last call, she was wanting to discuss with us, like, what has been happening in the last three months on the mastermind? Like, what were people taking away? And I was kind of not feeling well. So I had my video off and I was just listening into the conversation. And there were so many beautiful people. Um, There is a lady from um, Washington State in the U.S. who's a Native American and Mm. she's looking to raise $750,000 to buy a piece of property on native land and um, create a charitable project. So that was what she's been working on in the last three Mm. months, like looking into inside around how to raise that money and how she's showing up. Um, We have a a lawyer from Atlanta, Georgia, um, who practices to help families with children with um, mental health issues and disabilities to get um, support and funding for special their special needs kids. Mm. Um, she shows up for them and she was looking like, how could she be of more service and um, how is she showing up in that work? Um, we have a beautiful coach from the UK who is building her coaching practice. So just like all kinds of interesting people mm. from all over the world. And what I was listening to them say that they were taking away from the last three months was mostly this, um, like, what if it's less on me to make this happen? Mm-hmm. Like, what if it's not a hundred percent entirely up <clears throat> to me to get those seven hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars? Like, what if it's not a hundred percent on me, the little lawyer person in this world? Um, to be sure those families get that funding via my intellect and my uh, ability to navigate the system. Mm. What if it's not on me when I have the coach in the UK, when she's showing up on a radio show, which she did, like, what if she doesn't have to prepare everything she's going to say down to the last word, which she didn't have time for. She's, you know, also has a thriving, growing family of young kids. Like, she, what if I can just show up and speak from my heart and and mm. just let, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, the deeper intelligence speak through mm. me, my intuition speak through me. And it was sort of a letting go that mm. I noticed of from control and I have to make everything happen to what if life is supporting me uh, to do this? And so I want to stop there and say like, what I, I had a thought about this in the shower this morning, Leo, which is <laughs> to, to bring it to the conversation, which is even if you don't believe that there is some greater spiritual um, power or a higher self, a deeper self, God, uh, life unfolding, like whatever you wanted to call it, like, like if you don't know if that's true, and and honestly life is a, is a real mystery. 
do we really know? Like, no, we don't. Like, we may have a feeling of it. Um, but what if just dropping the thought that everything is on you is already powerful enough to free you up, to relax your self, mm. to quiet your mind? And what if just just alone having having the grace to drop that thought opens you up to be more present in the moment like what if just dropping that thought gets you back to the here and the now like takes the pressure off of your shoulders loosens your up your being and from there you just are able to show up differently in the world what if you're just able to see more opportunities than you saw before because you're less concerned about making it happen um what if just dropping that thought alone regardless if if there's some mm -hmm. you know magical power mm -hmm. in the background, do you know what i mean and you're just really more here and now joyful gratefulness mm. um yeah I had that thought this morning. So that's that's where I wanted to go, Leah. What are you mm. what are you hearing in that? I I so so love that. And what just came to me is what's what I observe and what's really interesting to me, it's kind of not just that thought, but any thought. Yes. And I, I mean, I see that on and on and on with clients and very spiritual ones and not spiritual ones at all, when they start to drop thought, yeah, the the, the opportunities, the doors, the things that were already there they start to see it and the, they they start to walk through the doors and they start to really take the next steps and somehow it it seems as if it was already always there i don't know but it looks like it as if when like the Nebel, the Schleier, the how yeah. do you call that? The fog, the, the veil. The fog, the veil of our thinking, the thinking that we have when we think we need to make it happen, everything to be in control, when that loosens up and even just a little tiny bit. Um it is as if life just jumps in. Mm. And that's so interesting to me. Yeah. And also the other part of it, the spiritual, not spiritual, whatever we want to call it. When I'm present with someone, I just know how to talk about it and to talk from soul to soul that and it could be a very practical conversation about life or a extremely spiritual one or a philosophical one or a psychological one and it's in every of these conversations it's it's in it somehow yeah. when it comes from the being present and connected and in life together and looking together at life, not knowing if it's truth with a capital T, but somehow trusting your wisdom, my wisdom, wisdom in the moment through us. And that's just magical in its own way. And I do quite kind of the same thing without the heavenly team or or 
having an idea of being connected to um, angels or people or nothing at all. I I feel connected in a in a broader way, but I often lose things or don't know where they are or and I just let go and and in the knowing I will find it again and maybe this letting go is already the ask for help. Yeah. And that supports the the feeling of being supported somehow. And in the deepening of what we are pointing to, it, it's one possibility of explaining. It's the one we, we could hear something. Yeah. Um, there, there is an inner knowing of, of how life could work without having words without yeah. always being able to speak about it, but it's this um, walking, jumping, dancing, jumping from the cliff into the hands of God somehow. And for me, even though the words are strange and I would have I mean, I would have left the conversations immediately if I would have heard myself talk about it in the way I'm just going to point out. But nowadays it seems not even that we are a, sp a spiritual being. It seems to me that we are not that we are different spiritual beings, but that we are a spiritual being One spiritual in this yeah. sense of consciousness, yeah. like linked through time, space, matter, one consciousness, experience, experiencing it through different bodies and things and whatever is in this space so this interconnectedness I feel deeper and deeper and deeper and there is no preference and that's a bit weird and our my ego doesn't like it at all but this kind of consciousness doesn't have preference for experience mm -mm. And that's totally different to what our ego would want to hear and that it's always progressing and better and higher and richer. It's wild and strange and effed up sometimes for the experience. And or the evolving, but the real one, and that's not always nice. Yeah. It's sometimes hitting rock bottom, and we're still okay, we're still whole, we're still consciousness in form. And if I would have heard myself saying that, oh, mm. boy, I would have run. <laughs> yeah. Far away. But nowadays, it... It seems pointing in that direction for me. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I was just listening while you were talking. Yeah. Um. So, so if I would say, like, what is what is my spirituality? It's just my spirituality is like dropping as many thoughts as possible letting my being become more quiet and relaxed and just watching how everything just becomes a lighter experience from there. Lighter experience, loving experience, 
more miraculous experience. Um, and that's literally the only thing that I prescribe to <laughs> in, <laughs> in life. And the rest is, you know, like you said, it's hard to put words on it. It's getting glimpses of, of a greater one consciousness for me too. Um, but often I found myself just being in this body, this personality, Shalia, like this, this human in the form and yeah, dropping thoughts, getting more quiet and relaxed mm -hmm. and living lighter is just really the, the thing I can see there. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is it just doesn't matter then if you are a Christian, if you're Muslim, if you um, speak with the Archangel Michael, if you uh, have a spiritual team, like if whatever your experience of the mystery of life is in this form, I think that everyone can agree on the other thing I just said, you know, mm. things just do get easier from there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not to lose ourselves in the concepts of it. Yeah. But the core of all of it is always love, but love in the in the purest form. And love is always everything, all of it at once. Yeah. So cool. Mm. Oh, Leah, thanks for jamming out with me. I love these conversations <laughs> so much. <laughs> me too. So, so cool. Mm -hmm. So, should I take us out on this yes. one? Yes. <laughs> I don't even need Always. to ask. I don't even need to ask. You no, know. do it. Yeah, guys. So, yeah, we hope you heard something for yourself today um, that makes your life a little lighter and easier, more loving, present, that it awakens the well being in you that's always there. And um, if you like what you're hearing and you want to get updates, like follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening in. Um, Talk to your friends and your family um, if you think they could benefit from this understanding. You see them struggling and you think they could have a little less struggle um, by listening in. We'd love to have more people come on board these conversations. So see you the next time on Time for You. Have a great rest of your two weeks until we hear you again. Bye. <laughs> Bye.